The smell, taste, and look of the holidays rolled into a sticky, crunchy, sweet confection does more than tickle your senses. My holiday baklava recipe focuses on holiday flavors to include pistachios, pomegranate seeds, cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, brown sugar, and orange zest rolled in layers of buttered phyllo dough and coated in a honey orange syrup. This is quite the indulgence to serve your guests or give as gifts. Baklava is a well-known dessert around the world. The origins are unknown, but both Greece and Turkey stake their claims. There is record of the modern-day baklava served to the upper class during the 15th century Ottoman Empire in Constantinople, which is modern-day Istanbul. While there are many variations, the most basic baklava includes finely chopped nuts surrounded in phyllo dough and covered in a simple syrup or honey. Regardless of the technique in stacking or rolling, you achieve layers of sweet nuttiness. For my holiday rolled baklava recipe, you'll need granulated sugar, water, orange zest, and juice, honey, phyllo dough, either store-bought or homemade, pistachios, pomegranate seeds, cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, brown sugar, and butter. Let's begin with a little prep of zesting and juicing an orange and removing the pomegranate arils. Zest the orange and set it aside. Cut the orange in half and squeeze out as much of the juice and pulp as you can in a one cup measuring cup. Add enough water to equal that one cup. So that's all the liquid we're gonna need for our honey orange syrup. Use a knife to score a pomegranate into four or five sections. Only cut through the outer skin, from the top root to the bottom. Pull the sections apart so you don't cut into the seeds. Place the pomegranate in a bowl of water and gently rake your fingers across the seeds to remove them to sink to the bottom. The pith and skin should float to the top. Remove the pith and skin as they release the seeds and then discard them. Once all seeds are at the bottom of the bowl, skim any remaining pith off the top, drain the seeds, and place them on towels to dry until you're ready for them in the recipe. To make the honey orange syrup, you need a small saucepan. In that small saucepan, we're gonna add 300 grams, which is one and a half cups of granulated sugar. Stir in the orange juice and water mixture. You're gonna heat on medium high heat. We're gonna heat the sugar in orange and water until boiling. With the orange juice mixture boiling and the sugar melted, go ahead and reduce the temperature down to medium low heat as long as you have a consistent simmer and then let this mixture simmer for about 10 minutes. Keep an eye on it, stir it occasionally so nothing burns. Stir in 170 grams, which is a half a cup of honey. Stir until the honey is melted. Remove the mixture from the heat and preheat your oven to 375 degrees. We're gonna grease a nine by 13 inch pan, which is a three quart baking dish. And you want one with high sides because of the rolled baklava sitting in it. You can grease your pan with whatever fat you prefer. I typically grease my pan with whatever the main fat is in my dish. So for this one, we're using butter to brush our phyllo sheets. So I'm gonna use butter to grease mine. And then set your baking dish aside. To make the pistachio filling in the bowl of a food processor, we're gonna add 226 grams, which is two cups or a half a pound of shelled pistachios. These should be roasted but unsalted. We don't want that extra salt in the sweet dish. Then to that we're going to add the spices. We're going to add one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of grated nutmeg, and a half a teaspoon of ground cloves. Holiday in a bowl. Go ahead and add in the orange zest from that orange that we zested earlier and a third cup of packed brown sugar. It smells wonderful. Okay, add your top and then you're gonna pulse until the nuts are in very small pieces. All right, let's take a look at the mixture. They're almost ground, the nuts, but you can still see the nice green color and you've got a few that may have be a little chunky, but you're looking for just a pretty consistently ground mixture here. This is about the consistency you're looking for. Go ahead, spoon the pistachio mixture into a bowl. This smells really nice and the pomegranate arils that we uh, took from the pomegranate and set aside and to allow to, to drain and dry. So this is a cup of pomegranate arils and we're just gonna add those 
to our nut mixture. Such pretty ruby red color to that green. And let's give both of these a stir. Look at that, isn't that just a beautiful green and red mixture, perfect for the holiday season. In a small bowl, we're gonna melt one cup of butter, which is two sticks or eight ounces. And I always dice my butter first because it just melts more easily. We're gonna heat in the microwave for 20 seconds, stir, continue five to 10 second increments until the butter is melted. Now that we have all of our ingredients ready, the butter's melted, pistachio and pomegranate mixture is ready. Our honey and orange syrup is on the stove cooling down. Now we can actually open the thawed phyllo sheets because we want to keep them sealed until we're ready for them because they will dry out if our timing isn't right. So what I prefer to do is in order to transport my sheets wherever I need to in the kitchen, just for flexibility, I like to place my sheets on a cookie sheet so that I have a hard surface I can just easily lift up and move. I usually place a piece of, piece of parchment paper down on the cookie sheet. And <clears throat> we're using one roll of store-bought phyllo dough, which is 18 sheets or one pound. If you're using homemade, you're gonna need about 12 sheets because remember homemade phyllo is a little bit thicker if you're using a rolling pin because we just can't get those super thin sheets like we can with store-bought. And then place your phyllo on the baking sheet. And then I like to cover up with another sheet of paper, either wax paper or parchment paper. And then I put a damp towel on top of that. The damp towel just keeps them from drying out too quickly, but also it doesn't soak them so that your sheets are wet because then they'll stick together and you don't want that to happen. So now we're ready. Have your baking pan next to your work surface. So everything should be just accessible to where you are and you can move quickly. Okay, we're gonna start with one phyllo sheet and we're gonna be using three phyllo sheets per roll. So that's three at a time. If you've got some that are broken or torn, that's all right because we're gonna be rolling them and layering them so it doesn't matter if they're broken or torn. Appears that my stack of phyllo is torn. Several of them. Line them up on a work surface. We're gonna to try to keep them together. The butter will help them stick. So if they are torn, it's not a big deal. All right, so then you're gonna take a brush in your bowl and your butter and we're gonna butter each phyllo sheet pretty generously. You wanna butter the whole sheet and we're only buttering the top part of the sheet. We're not buttering the back side because these are super thin and these are like tissue paper thin. If you're using homemade phyllo, you're gonna, your sheets are gonna be a little bit thicker and that's okay. So for homemade phyllo, you'll only wanna use one to two sheets per roll because they are so much thicker than a store-bought. Okay, then you're gonna take another phyllo sheet and put it on top of the one of the first one that you just buttered. And then just do a light coating of butter on that one. Okay, we're gonna add a third sheet on top of that second one and do another coating of butter. Once you start layering these, it's easier to butter them. They don't tear as easily. We're going to use one sixth of our mixture of our pistachio and pomegranate mixture. One sixth is a half a cup. Take a half a cup of your mixture, spread it around the phyllo, leave about an an inch, half inch to an inch border. And then we're gonna be rolling this, so it may not look like a lot right now, but once it's rolled, there will be layers of this mixture in the phyllo. You're gonna start at one short end, and you're just gonna start rolling it like you would a cinnamon roll. You wanna make it pretty tight. If you feel like your sheets are a little too dry, you can always brush a little bit of butter as you're rolling particularly if you feel like they're starting to tear. So notice how we're just rolling it all the way up. I can even pull it down here. All right, when we get near the end, you can kind of decide what that looks like for you. I like to do just a little bit of brush on the edges of, of butter if they're not really buttered that well. And then on the corn on the edges of the roll. Okay, now we're going to fold this roll in and the reason for that is so that it fits in the pan. It also makes a nice clean edge. So you just tape, rolling them over like a burrito. I feel like making a soft taco or something like a burrito. Okay, so it kind of smooths out those jagged edges. And then you continue rolling until the end. Okay, now you've got a nice rolled baklava. Place it in your buttered pan. Notice it fits just perfectly in a nine by 13. It goes from edge to edge and do a nice brushing of 
butter over the roll. And the purpose of this is to keep the rolls from drying out as they are sitting in the pan until we can finish rolling up the remainder of our baklava. All right, and then we continue with the next and remaining five rolls. Remember as you are stacking your phyllo and as you're creating your rolls to keep the other phyllo that's sitting in the pan covered so that they don't dry out. Just finished rolling up my last, my sixth roll. And we're gonna place it in the pan. Notice that pan is tight. Take a little bit more butter, brush over that last roll. As you're rolling, if you see that your other rolls are drying out, just add a little bit of butter to them, but mine look good. I have a little bit of filling left over. We're gonna save that and put it over the top to make it look pretty when they're baked. Before placing them in the oven, we're gonna go ahead and cut them into 18 pieces. We're gonna eyeball and cut it into thirds. And just cut all the way through. Got a runaway pomegranate there. We're gonna place them in the oven for 30 to 40 minutes until they are golden brown and they look crispy on top. Our baklava is hot right out of the oven. Notice how brown it is on top. It's definitely crispy, I can tell. And so now while this is still hot, we wanna pour the honey orange syrup over the top. So I'm gonna give it one quick stir. It's been sitting, it's cooled. And then just, you can hear it sizzle. And you may not use all of your syrup, so just use enough so that your pan is about a half to three quarters full of the liquid or else it'll be really moist. So we're gonna limit what we put on there and leave, put the rest aside. So our baklava will take about an hour to soak up all of this liquid. And then we want it to cool down before we cut into it. Longer than an hour is best, but you just wanna keep an eye on it, make sure that the liquid has all been soaked in. For any syrup that you have left over, just use up for pancakes or waffles. Make a great topping in place of maple syrup. Our baklava has been sitting out for a couple of hours. Notice that the liquid is all soaked in. It's a nice caramelized bottom there. Let's take out one and let's take it a closer look. Notice that they're still a little crispy on top. The baklava is sticky from the honey, from the simple syrup. You can hear that crunch. All the rolls, see the pomegranate arrows, even some of the citrus from the zest, a little bit of green from the pistachios. So yeah, a little bit of everything in that roll. The edges are nice and smooth and pretty and tight. I would definitely call this a holiday roll. If you really wanted to add a little bit of flair for your holiday guests, take a couple of rolls, plate them up, add some of that leftover pomegranate and pistachio filling that we had. That would really dress it up nicely. And it would show exactly what's in your dish. There you are, a beautiful holiday dessert. Store these rolled baklava covered in the fridge for a few days. For longer storage to eat later or give away as gifts, wrap as many rolls as you want to give away to one person or a few to leave in the fridge for a few days. Then remove when ready to give to your friends or eat yourself. We love these holiday baklava rolls. The house smells warm and inviting with a nutty, buttery, fruity sweet indulgence that keeps you coming back for more. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing. Until next time, go bake the world.